systems, what do we got here? 19. A quick follow-up question as well when I review the refrigeration graphs, when a system is superheated, say 20 degrees, I understand I move to the right 20 degrees, but to find the enthalpy, do I follow the temperature curve down or should I go straight down to get the superheated enthalpy? I understand this probably makes a minor difference, but just wanted to make sure. I'm looking at systems 19 and you referenced looking up H4 to get an exact enthalpy. I went to the table and say an enthalpy for liquids and vapor and I wasn't sure how to get the exact enthalpy for H4 given the tables. Could you walk me through how you found it? Absolutely. So let's take each of those questions one at a time. The first question, as far as finding the superheat and, and finding the enthalpy from the superheat, um, it's horizontal and then vertical. So let me show you on an actual um, chart. So if you are uh, doing 20 degrees superheat, let's just say, for example, you're starting from, let, let's say you know that the temperature um, of the evaporator is 40 degrees, then you're going to add 20 degrees of superheat. You're going to go horizontally until you hit the 60 degree temperature line. It's implied that the uh, process continues to be constant pressure, which means horizontal. So as you're horizontal through the evaporator, you're going to continue horizontally to the right to have, oh, well, that's white, let me get red, to have however much uh, superheat you have. So I'm going to take that all the way to the 60 degree line. There you go. It's a better color. Um, so... That's, that's the whole story with superheat. You just want to stay horizontal until you hit the target temperature, going from 40 to 60. That's it. Then to find the enthalpy, you do not follow the curved temperature line. You go completely vertical from that point. And you can go up or down for convenience. They put the uh, horizontal axis at both the top and bottom. I just snipped it for the, um, for the top here. So whatever that point ends up being, you're going to go vertically up from there and then you can read the horizontal axis on top or bottom no curve all right so that's the first question the second question is regarding how to find the pressure at h4 um, of this particular problem so let's clear that so h4 this problem was at 150 psi a and there was no subcooling. So where are we? We are at 150. So here's where it gets tricky. I, I can understand why this came up as a question. So this is a logarithmic scale on the left, which means that the distance to go from 40 to 60 is more than the distance to go from 60 to 80, which is more than the distance to go from 80 to 100. So as we go from 100 to 200, you may be tempted to just kind of pick a point that's halfway in between to get 150. So maybe you'd be somewhere around here, let's say, and then you'd go up vertically to get the associated enthalpy with that. And you'd probably end up saying it's something like 42 or 43 BTU per pound. And that's unfortunate because <laughs> I don't know if that actually makes a difference in the answer for this particular problem, but it does lead to a bit of inaccuracy. And I'll explain why. So if there was a 150, the distance from 100 to 150 would be more than the distance from 150 to 200 because of the logarithmic, logarithmic scale. So we should expect that we're going to be above the halfway point um, to be at 150. But then the question is, well, how much above? And am I just going to eyeball that? Like it's we need to we need a way of being more precise. Well, if you're in a hurry, you may not need to be more precise. You may just be able to say, okay, here's halfway and I'm gonna go a little bit above that. Maybe you get away with that. But if you wanna be more precise, you can try to use the tables to do so. So I grabbed the table here and looked up the pressure. Uh, I found this is a bit lucky, but 149.8, which is close enough to 150 that we'd never be able to see the difference anyway. So we'll say that's the operating pressure of the condenser of the, of the high pressure 
part of the process. The associated temperature at that pressure is 105 degrees. And that's handy to know because now we can have a look at these temperature lines and we happen to have 100 and 120 right there. And now it's a little easier to visualize because we could sort of say, okay, where would 105 be in between these two? Well, it'd be about a quarter of the way above. It'd probably be more like here. And previously we were thinking it was more like here. So now we'll go vertically up from that location and it's looking like it's more around 45 BTU per pound instead of 42, 43. So we just brought a little bit more accuracy to the solution than we otherwise would. And uh, just for completeness, I think you know this already, but it's always worth repeating. The enthalpy at state three, which we just found, is the enthalpy at state four because the expansion process is isenthalpic, constant enthalpy. So moving straight down from state three to state four, I don't know what the uh, evaporator pressure is, but however far you have to go down to interact to uh, intersect the evaporation process line. Um, so you can be confident that H3 and H4 are the same. So if you can find H3, you have H4. All right, good question. I know that keeps people up at night, so I'm glad we were able to address it here. 